Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Herd Fit Podcast with Dr. Sam Ree and myself, Coach David Syverson. This podcast is aimed at helping anyone and everyone looking to enhance their healthy lifestyle through fitness, nutrition, and most importantly, mindset. All right, welcome back to the HerFit Podcast. I am Coach David Syverson. I'm here with Dr. and Coach Sam Marie. We are now, at the time of this posting, probably going to be a couple weeks away from the Open. And we talked about what equipment we should expect. We talked about the Open in a few different ways. One thing we want to dive into here is just mental prep for the actual Open, for the three weeks, but actually for the days individually. And I think that's really important because there are a lot of people right now, this is the first time they're doing it, or we've had a few people say this is the first time they've signed up in years. And even for those that have done the open, this is your eighth one, ninth one, tenth one, have done it every time they've been to Bison. Uh, I think there's something for you in this, in that everyone has a different approach to the open, but there are a lot of similarities we should be aware of. And I think it can help a lot of us out. So I would say the first one should be like, know your routine, because I'll say this about the open, whether you're at Bison, whether you're at a different gym, there's a different vibe during the open. And because it means something and we take it serious here and maybe your gym does, maybe your gym doesn't, no matter what, the, the vibe is different. And you have to try to keep as many things the same as possible, even though a lot around you will be different. And I think one of the things you really want to try to dive into over these next few weeks, some of you may have already started this, is try to know on Friday, what time do you work out? What class are you going to go to? Or some of it, we're going to open up that some can do it on Thursday night at 8.15. You know, we haven't even announced that yet, but we will. Sam, what are you doing the open workouts? We've been talking about this. Yeah. I'm right now planning on doing it Thursday night. Cool. Just so that in the service of the podcast audience, so that we can <laughs> selfless pro provide a perspective on it. Yeah. I was able to do that last year. I didn't think it was the best best way of doing it and yep. I wouldn't recommend it yep. because there's value in doing it when you have given it some thought, given it a little bit of analytics, yep. formulated your mental approach. Yep. The positive though is that it will now come out 3 p.m. Eastern yes. on Thursdays. Much earlier. Yeah. So we do have a couple more hours than we did last year. Where Sometimes that's all you really need. Yeah. Like in the past, example, Sam did this on Thursday nights last year. The workout will come out somewhere between 8 and 8.15 at night. He was doing it at 8.45. Like there really isn't much time to reflect and kind of trade ideas and maybe bounce some ideas off of each other to reach his optimal performance. And so now that we'll get those extra five hours. Yeah, that's super helpful. I would say it really depends on your mindset. Some people don't like perseverating over it too much. Yeah. Some people really do like calculating it. Mm -hmm. So it really just depends on what suits you. Okay. But I'll be doing it Thursday night. Cool. And Sam, he's to the best of his ability, he has been coming in occasionally on a Thursday night to work out just to start setting up his daily or weekly flow for, all right, what's he going to be doing throughout the day Thursday? Does his work impact it? Does it have a positive impact, negative impact? So that's something that I'm big on. Like I'm probably going to be doing them on Fridays at 4.15 or 5.15, somewhere in that window. So I've been trying to make sure I work out with the 4.15 class every Friday so I, now I have a flux. Now I have a plan, especially with like, all right, Brock's at daycare on this day. I get home from coaching in the morning. I can sleep for an hour and a half. I eat at this time, go train. And I think that's something last year I made the mistake. I got yelled at where I did the last open workout, the hardest one, in my opinion, on a Thursday night. I, I hadn't trained on a Thursday night in, I don't know, ever really, to be honest. I, Thursday nights, I've almost never trained. And I just hopped into that workout, didn't warm up that well didn't have the pattern set up, my daily pattern set up, and I did pretty poorly. And I think that was part of the reason why. And so I would challenge a lot of you guys to start putting thought into it. What time are you going to do the open? All right, now start planning your day for the next few weeks around, all right, as if you were doing the open workout that night, see what works, see what doesn't work. Yeah, I think I started to do that for my own planning. And I also want to mentally clear myself so I don't have anything I don't worry so much about the day of, but I want to make sure that I'm not feeling like I have a ton to do on the day after so that I can feel like I can chase it and then feel like I don't have so many other things weighing on me. Yep. What do you do when you have to work out? Okay, you're planning on working out at 4.15 on a Friday. So what time do you feel like you're going to start arriving? 
what do you need for your mobility stretch warm up? Because right. I think some people would use your example and tee off of that. I mean, I'm big on at least a half hour before that 415 starts. And I think all you bison guys and girls know that there's not going to be like as formal warm up period, stretching period. A lot of that will be you know, the coach explains the workout, the scaling options. We make partners so that you have a judge. We'll talk about that later. And they're going to say, all right, you have about 20 minutes to start. Go get, go get yourself warmed up. And we will have things written down for you, but it won't be as robotic as go do this, stretch this, do that, stretch this. You know, it won't be like that. And so with that in mind, you can really come up with a warm-up plan for yourself. Because I'll tell you what, there's certain things I want to do in a warm-up that if I show up to a class and that coach does not do that what I want in the warm-up, I don't get to warm up the way I want. So it's a like positive in my opinion. I'm big on show up at least 30 minutes prior to that period, not before my workout, before the period of that class begins. And five minutes of movement with it could be a bike, could be a ski, could be a row, could be burpees, could be jump rope. You can mix it up, right? Nothing intense, just move blood for about five minutes. And then I get into some movement related stretching routine. I don't overdo the stretch, but I want to put my body in that range of motion, whether it's an overhead squat whether it's a handstand, a pull-up, I want to put my body in every position that it's going to be in and just hold it for a little bit. Feel stretched. Feel like my muscles are lengthening and feel good. But again, don't overdo it. You're not doing a yoga class before a wad. It's not good for you. And then based on the workout, which in most cases, open workouts are very high heart rate, is I will get my heart rate at, up at least once, probably two or three times, like an interval piece, one minute on, two minutes off, three times of the movements that I'm doing in the workout. So you start adding all this up. This takes time. It's, it's a solid half hour that you would need. And again, I, I think I'm very big on you don't want your heart rate to spike from 60 beats a minute to 180 beats per minute at the start of a workout. That's like gets you like to that red line stage. You want to feel that heart rate go up to 100, 130 beats per minute. Just get yourself like that taste a little bit, but you're not trying to destroy yourself. And I just watched Ashley and Julia do a Waldwick comp workout in preparation and they both helped them strategize a little bit. And I said, you got to go hard on that first assault bike. I don't think they touched the assault bike before the workout started. And they both were smoked on the bike. And I think that's, I told them, I was like, I think you guys should get to that comp a little early, get on the assault bike a few times, make yourself tired. And when still people hear that, and I hear this all the time when I warm a class up, the warm ups are long, sometimes they're a little hard. People look at you, dude, Really? Why, why are you trying to make this horror on us? Well, that's because I feel the same way. Sometimes <laughs> I feel like I only have so much capacity and if I use it all up in my warm up, then I won't have anything left. But I will the intention help. is yeah. to help out your workout. And I, and I agree, the more I do this, the more I feel like, listen, I don't have to tire myself out and I don't want to overexercise the muscles that I d that might be using, right. but I do need to get my heart rate elevated. Yeah. Yeah. And you can be very simple with heart rate. Hop on the assault bike, hop on a rower, and you're not going to jeopardize your workout. Here's something I want. What are your thoughts on, do you take a rest day before your open workout? Or do you take it two days before, then come in the day before and just like low key it? I've tried it a couple different ways. If I'm not injured, if I feel good, I need to do something the day before. Same. Not a lot. It doesn't have to be, I don't have to tire myself out. I feel like... I'm more of an e mommy kind of guy where I'll mm. just run through some movements, yep. feel like I get a moderate sort of exertion, not maximal, but moderate yep. to significant where I am, you know, tired afterwards. But I think that if I do that, I feel much better for the day of. Agreed. I'm big on not coming in stiff. And I think sometimes you feel stiff after like, I'm going to be taking off tomorrow and I know Tuesday I'll be stiff because of it. And you just plan around that a little bit. And just on Thursdays prior to the open here at Bison, we purposely we have classes, but we don't do anything recorded for time. And it's usually skill base, a little bit of strength base, and we keep your body moving, but we're never doing anything to like a max effort. Those are very good for me yeah. the day before a workout. Yep. Last thing I'll say that is in terms of your routine, how intense should your efforts be leading up to the day you do the open? This is something we should all be thinking about because we're going to be normal bison wadding Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So if you're someone that needs to come in all day, like every day, that's fine. I would be very cautious about doing anything really hard on Wednesday. So come in and I wouldn't put anything max effort out there. And some of you guys that have a hard time recovering, Tuesday should probably have, you should be tapping the brakes a little bit too. But it's a hard, it's a hard line to drive. Because I've seen people get, back when it was five weeks, I saw people get in worse shape throughout the open because they were so like, don't go hard. Don't go hard. All right, go hard Friday. Do it again Sunday. Don't go. I rip my hands. I'm sore as hell. Like I can't work out these next three days. 
my, my plan for everyone would be, assuming you're doing the workout Friday, do the workout Friday, go hard. And I would try to get in Saturday or Sunday and, and go hard again, unless you're going to repeat it. We'll talk about that later. But if you're just one and done on Fridays, I would go hard again, uh, Saturday or Sunday, all right, Monday or Tuesday. And then every other time that you're coming in. So not both those don't come in Saturday and Sunday, go hard. Don't come in Monday and Tuesday and go hard. Pick Saturday or Sunday, pick Monday or Tuesday. All right and go hard on those days. And every other day should be like 70 to 80% zone. I feel that way there's, and I think everyone has to individualize what yeah. go hard means. Like for example, if that workout, the like let's say 22.1 smokes my shoulders, yep. I will probably go moderately hard on Saturday if I were to do it on a Friday, but I would probably work on something else, like maybe more squatting based or, right. or something else, just because I know my left shoulder always gets so yeah. cranky. Yep. That's where it can get very individualized. And I will have to do something, but I might not necessarily do more shoulder work. Yeah. So that's another thing, guys, like I'll put myself out there. If anyone wants to reach out to me and just, Hey, what do you think about this plan? I think it would help a lot of you guys out because sometimes those spontaneous decisions where you just decide to go hard because your best friend came to the gym and you guys want to get after each other, it could affect, you know, next week's open workout. Now, some of you guys that rip your hands up every time you go past 50 pull-ups, if the bison wad has 75 pull-ups on Tuesday, maybe you cut it down a notch. Like just little things like that. I think you can, if you seek some outside help, we can definitely help you out with that. The other thing I would say is that you have to realize you can have your routine daily and weekly for the days leading up to the open. Mm -hmm. But you also realize that things may have to be flexible during the open. True. And if you want everything set up perfectly for your open performance and oh, it's like, not- like equipment wise? Or anything. Like maybe you're like, man, why are we starting so late? Or, right. yeah. or whatever it is. If you get thrown off, maybe you did miss uh, lunch that day for some reason. Mm -hmm. Like you got to roll with it a little yep, bit. Yep. Cause there's, it's never going to be perfect. Never. Yep. It's very rare that any performance will be perfect. So your routine will help you get prepped but you also have to anticipate that they're probably going to be little bumps. Right. Leading. Control what you can control and be flexible with what you cannot control. Right. And I'll tell you this right now. If, there, if one of the open workouts is 20 minutes long, the morning classes, you're starting late, six and seven. It's impossible to do two 20 minute heats, warm the people up, set people up, especially if there's equipment needed. So yeah, it's things like that you can't control. That's a good point. So nutrition, sleep, hydration, right? The boring stuff that has an enormous impact on everyone's performance. One thing that's helped me cope with this, digestion and hydration, look at it as a two to three day process. Meaning what you eat Wednesday will impact how you feel on Friday. And I think a lot of us only think about, okay, I'm working out hard tonight, I gotta eat clean. Or if I'm gonna, if I'm behind on my hydration, resetters looking at you, if, if you're behind on your hydration Tuesday, Wednesday, but then you get back on it Thursday, it's probably not gonna be good enough. And I think that's something we should all be cognizant of. If you want to recover well, what you do Friday after your open workout will impact how you feel Sunday. And that's always tricky with us because we do the uh, open party on Friday night. Liz, Liz and I talked about this and she's our new event planner, social director, sorry, at Bison. And she's going to be planning a lot of parties for us. And we talked about the open party being the first week versus the third week. And she's like, maybe we should do it the third week. And I was like, no, we always kick off the open with the open party. And then she... Like the way she does, she made me think about it in a different way in that if people are going to go after it Friday and then go get, you know, a lot of people, it's like a big night out for them, drinking and eating. Yeah, that could affect their recovery if they want to redo it Sunday or just for the next week in general. So that's not a very athlete way of looking at it. But, we, you know, we talked, we combined some, some thoughts on it. It's also an anniversary party for Bison. So we're, we're keeping it that Friday, that first Friday. I think this is also something that is individual to you. Usain Bolt ate chicken nuggets during his Olympic performance yeah. and he did fine. If you're like me and I, you're older, keeping on track makes such a big difference. Yeah. I can tell if I Same. eat pizza with my kids on Friday, yep. I will feel like crap for a while. Yeah, And it's just, especially during the open, it's just not worth it for me yeah. to do that. If I want to, I'm going to wait until after the open to really Sport. let go. Yeah. But I know what I feel like if I'm not hydrating properly and eating properly. And I think almost everyone who's been doing reset feels it. Yeah. So if you can just hang on for a little while longer, yeah, that, and, that yeah. will help. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Three weeks. Again, it's not that long. It's yeah. really, five, five is, <laughs> it's funny. Five is five. Like the fat, if, for those that haven't been at Bison for a long time, in the past, I would say half the people that signed up for the open 
after three weeks, they're like, dude, I'm done with this. I don't want to do it anymore. And now that it's three weeks, I love the fact that it can just keep everyone engaged. And it's not a long time. It's really not. Now let, let's talk about a mental state. We call I call this the pre-pain cave mental state. All right. And some of you guys are going to experience this for the first time. Some of you already know what I'm talking about. You're going to feel anxious and nervous before a lot of these open workouts for a few reasons. Why? Because we make it a big deal here. B, you have a judge that's going to be watching you and counting you and you think they're judging you. They're not, right? The bad kind of judging. But you're going to be worried. You know, anticipate that. You're going to feel like I still to this day have weird feelings right before an open workout. And at Legends last year and this year, I got nauseous. Literally thought I was going to throw up on the floor right before the workout. And I still have to tell myself this means I care. Like that, that's what it means. It doesn't mean you're in bad shape. It doesn't mean you had a, you had a bad piece of chicken the night before. It means you care. Like you care so much that it's actually physically having an impact on you. Tell me like you've had that before, right? Yes. Many times. The more I care about something, the more, yeah, anxious I will definitely feel beforehand. And that's a good thing. I think that's something that you should actually look at and try to channel it as this is a positive, All right? If you're sitting there and be like, it's 22.1, when are we starting? All right, cool. Like. That, that's when I'd be like, all right, you're probably not going to really hit your physical peak in this workout. And I think that you need to trust that what you're doing in the open is what you do all year here. The second the coach goes three, two, one, go, it's the same thing. Yes, your mental state might be different. You might be trying harder. It might burn the lungs more, but you're not all of a sudden speaking a different language. You're not doing different things. You're doing what we do all year. You're challenging your body and your mind. And you're trying to find where your physical potential is. And for some of us, you really find out in the open. Sometimes you kind of leave some out. But I think that pre-pain cave mental state is is really important. I hope you experience it, to be honest. I want to also say something for the athletes who are feeling a little overwhelmed. Yeah. If you don't have any experience with the open, I know people are like, what is this? Yeah. I don't know. And they're not people who deal very well with anxiety or they want to avoid an overly intense experience. Just remember this. Dave and I really care a lot about this. Right. And we have competitive aspirations, Dave more than me, but, you know, it, it means a lot. Right. If this is something that's relatively new to you, don't worry about the anxious feelings or the overwhelmed feelings because all you really have to do is focus on staying safe, which we will help. Yes. You're enjoying it because... You, you're around the people that you work out with on a regular basis. Yep. You're going to get three good workouts in. I promise you, there will yes. be three good workouts. Yes. And whatever you score, you score and that will be it. And there's going to be a lot of support too. There will be a ton of support. The, the support level in this gym is the highest for eight years now. This will be the ninth time. All right. Eight years in a row, the highest three a string of support you see in the gym is during these weeks. There are a big subset of us in the gym that love it and hate it. We love the fact that we're challenging ourselves, mm. but that anxiety and anxiousness and I don't want to say fear, but that that upregulated adrenaline state. Listen, I know half the athletes that I know are addicted to that. Yeah. They're addicted to it. Oh, yeah, for sure. And if you love that, you chase it. If you're someone like me who knows this really makes you a better person, mm -hmm. but it's not easy to get into that state right. or, or to deal with it, it makes you a better person every time. I yeah. mean, what? but you have to find what works for you. So I, I remember thinking when I first started in CrossFit, the three, two, one, go, and I'd be thinking about the workout and I'd have 500 thoughts in my head. I'd be like, okay, I need to get to the burpees here and this and this, and it, it would just lock me up. And at this point, when I, f I do most of that thinking before, and then when I start the workout, I try to keep my mind as clear and as empty as possible and trust my body will do what it's going to do. And if I try to control it consciously, I will not do as well as I normally do. And you have to find whatever works for you. It might be a clear state. It might be a fully analytical state. You might have a, a really upregulated, I'm going to crush it state. Mm -hmm. This is where you can develop your own success mantra. Mm -hmm. And you can really only do it in a state where it's meaningful to you. Dave said, if you're just like, all right, 22.1, then you won't know what it's like to actually be in a situation where you have to perform and do your best. Yep. And most people will find that with this. And I think that that's a great opportunity. Yeah. 
Yep, I agree. Staying in the moment. So this is building off what Sam just said, kind of natural transition that we have right there. Pacing, creating, sticking to a plan. I don't want to overdo that. There's some, and I respect this. Sometimes I wish I was like this, where you don't need to create a pace, a strategy, a plan for your workout. It will help if you're really trying to maximize your own result. But what I think what everyone, that might be your plan is to not go in and just let your body tell you what you're doing. Let your body dictate how you're feeling, how you're breathing. I think what I really mean by it is don't let others, by, and when I say others, I mean the people around you, don't let them dictate how hard you're going to go after a workout. Because I see this on a daily basis at the gym where someone feels they need to go at a certain rate of speed or they need to lift a certain load, a certain weight, they need to RX because, only because somebody else did. I see it all the time. What did that person do? Okay, I'll do it. Well, why does that matter? Well, we always, we usually do the same weights. Why? Well, we just, I, we just, you don't have a reason why. It's just like, it's like a comfort thing, right? And this can go one of two different directions. One can be you're, you've lost like some independence with this stuff. And the other is that you're trying too hard to beat others. And we'll get into that in a little bit. But I think that it's important for you to really use a coach or use yourself to say, what should you do? How should you approach this workout? Example, if you can do eight pull-ups in a row and there's a workout that has seven pull-ups per round and there's seven rounds, you probably should not be doing those first seven unbroken in the workout. You should try to go into a pace and say, I should probably break this up into two or three sets because I know at some point I'm going to be near failure. And a lot of these goals, I try to tell people this, anyone that will listen, your goal is to get to the halfway point of the workout and still feel like you can go faster. That will help you out immensely if you start thinking like that. Because A, you'll feel better. You'll feel safer, honestly, too. And it's more enjoyable to work out that way. How many times do we see people in a 15-minute workout go so hard for three minutes and then the, literally the rest of the 12 minutes are just miserable? And then like those negative thoughts, they actually slow you down. It's not just your breathing that slows you down. You just hate it so much. Where if they simply just tap the brakes and we're very aware of what they can and cannot do, you can make it to that eight minute mark and be like, all right, I'm tired, but I'm not spent. And I can really, I can actually go faster now if I want to. I think most of my experience in CrossFit has been learning to pace properly. Yeah, yeah. Like that's what's made me a better CrossFitter and in terms of workouts is knowing how to pace myself. But I do use outside cues to help myself. If I'm not the first person working out that day or and I look at the whiteboard, yeah. I'm not looking at numbers to try to beat people. Like, yeah. oh, I have to beat that person. Or like what to expect. What, but I'd look to what to expect. And then I'd look at my own capabilities and say, well, I feel like I can do X if yeah. I do it this way. But then I also know that when I'm in the middle of the workout, I might not stick to that plan. Right. I might feel better, like you said. And yeah. halfway in, I'm like, listen, I can pour it on a little bit more. Mm. Or I can say, whoa, this was a little ambitious and I have to dial it down just a little bit. But you never want to get to that part where you burn out where you redline, where you feel like, you know what, this is, like you said, suffering for yeah. another five minutes. Right. Like you can, everyone can suffer for 15 seconds or 30 seconds at the end. Yeah. But you want to get to that pace where you feel confident. Confidence during your workout yeah. is what you want to feel. It, you can't do that if you're basing your performance solely on whether or not you're doing better than somebody else. You can use it as motivation, but that is not what you should be using in terms of you're planning, pacing, and creating whatever it is that you feel like you can achieve. Yep. Coping with your result. Okay. So you're going to do a workout on a Friday. Maybe some of you do a Thursday. Some of you will do a Sunday, right? After almost everyone will leave every open workout saying the same thing. I could have went, went a little faster. I, I could have went. I rarely hear some. That's my best score right there. And honestly, in some cases, it probably is true. That's why people redo it. We'll talk about that next is it's like the point of a test, right? If I think back to, you know, academics in school, you do a test, you get a score. If you were going to redo that test the next day or the next week, you would probably get better, right? That, but the point of the test is where you were in that current state. And whatever you get, that is your result. And I think sometimes CrossFitters are notorious for this, that you always are just not happy enough. Like you're not proud of yourself for what you did. I'm proud of everyone that signs up for this thing. That alone is hard to do. Like I, I think right now our number is at 183 people. 
all of you, every single one of you, whether you've done this a lot, whether you're confident or not, whether you're new or not, I'm proud of that person for doing it. And I'll be even more proud when they show up to do the workout. Absolutely. I don't really care that much about the scores, nope. to be honest. I just like for the ones that have competitive goals and want to get to a certain stage, there will be some care there. I really don't look down on anyone that feels like they didn't do well. And I always also don't praise anyone up or lift anyone up that cr crushed the workout. I, re I genuinely mean that. And some of this is perspective too. So I've gone back and look, I have felt exact. I, I often feel exactly what you say. I don't feel like I did what I could have done, but I will also with time, go back and look at my workouts and say, that was a pretty good score actually yeah, for right. what I did. Yeah. And regardless of whether my elbow was feeling right or not, you will probably achieve closer to your capacity than you really think you did. And you will have tried very hard in a situation where your adrenaline was maxed out, where you were really gunning for it. So take that effort and, and really be happy with it. Yeah. I think the longer I've done this, the more I, I have been able to look at my workouts and say, you know what? I have given it my max effort at the time. Same here. I, maybe I could have gotten more reps if I had done this out or the other thing. Yeah. But listen, you, you do it to see how you do. And whatever that run is, whatever that shot you gave is, you have to just realize that was the best that you had at the yeah. time. Yeah, that's what you did. That's and the best your score was. And and I'm okay with that. And I don't honestly, I don't want to hear anyone say it this year. I would love for, oh, I could have went better. Like, why didn't you? That's going to be my answer. Like, I, I want you to be, hey man, I gave him my best effort and that's my score. That's that's what makes me proud as a coach is one's like, dude, I went as hard as, I don't want anyone to be like, oh, I didn't try that hard. Like, if someone came up to me, like, I didn't try that hard. What are we doing here? So if you know that you're not going to say that because you went as hard as you can, you tried your best, maybe you strategized wrong or paced wrong. That's not what I'm talking about. That's you, okay. You tried as hard as you could. And that's your score. Like, I'm proud of you for that score right now. I tell my kids this all the time. And also pretty much actually when I was teaching in medical school was, listen, if you're prepping for a test, like you're prepping for the MCAT or the SAT or something like that, you want to get to the point where you, no matter what your score was, you felt like you gave it your best effort. Yeah. So even if you did right. crappy on it, yep. you got to say, at least I gave it my best effort. Yep. Like you said, maybe you didn't prep right. Maybe your strategy wasn't right. Yep. Maybe the situation wasn't ideal for yeah. some reason. Things maybe, beyond your control. Right, maybe your impact. shoelace became untied <laughs> and, and you weren't able to finish your double unders, but you gave it your best effort. Yeah. And that if you can say that for yourself, you'll be fine. Yeah, you'll be proud. We'll be proud. All right. So that brings us to a really hot topic with the open, less than it used to be, which I'm really happy about. Redoing your open workouts, all right? The first thing I'm gonna say is this is your open. You decide if you wanna redo it or not redo it. There's no right or wrong. It's not good or bad to redo the workout. It's not good or bad to not redo the workout. So that thought is out there, all right? I want you to ask yourself why you're redoing a workout. So for those that don't know, this actually does happen. People do the workout on a Friday and they come back on Sunday and do it again because they want to get a better score. Cool, more power to them, all right? But I want people to ask themselves before you do that, why are you redoing it? And this is someone, I've redone workouts. Man, how many open workouts have I done? I've probably done um, close to 50 open workouts. Yeah, I was going to guess 50. So I've probably redone about 20 of them, I would say. All right, so just know that I've done this several times, but you need to ask yourself why. And if you are trying to, if, if you're doing it to one up somebody else, I think that's a really shitty approach because I'm gonna tell you why, it's not fair. If Let's use this example. If Sam does the open workout on Friday morning, gets 188 reps, that's a score, and I wanna beat Sam, whether I'm vocal about it or not. I come in on Friday night and get 189, beat Sam, flex my muscles, Sam comes in on Sunday morning like, fuck Dave, I'm gonna, I'm gonna beat Dave now. He gets 190 reps. Is that a real win if, if I don't get another shot at it? In your head, you probably, <laughs> <laughs> I beat Dave, whoa. But that's, and I'll get into the competitive, like between people, I do think there's some healthy competition in the gym and I like it, but that it's a cheap thing. And this happened a lot early days in Bison where someone just wanted to be the top dog. And this is why we had to make a rule that no, you can't do it Friday, Sunday, and then come back on Monday and do it again. We have a hard cutoff. You are not allowed to do the open workouts on Monday unless you were 
gone the entire weekend. All right. You know, in the past, we've listed the top yes. RX and scale. Yep. Are we going to continue to do that? Because I think that was one of the motivations why people would try to redo it so they could be up the top five. So this is what I'm going to say. I might in the past, we've top 10 guys, top 10 girls scaled an RX. We used to put it on a whiteboard and it's cool. Like I know people have told me that was a goal for them to get up there. And I love when I see new names up there, they're proud of it. I might say your first score will go up there. Oh. So there are no repeat scores. You'll log something different online, but whatever your first score, your first shot at a workout, that's the number we're putting up there. So even if you come in and beat your own score two weeks, two days later, not putting it up. So, because real competition is you get one shot. That's why I like live competing over online. You get one shot at a workout, you're done. Just keep that in mind. With all this, we're a pretty competitive gym. Some people are vocal about it, some are not. I think some people don't handle competition well. They just don't know how to put it in different departments in their head. It's just, I'm better than that person or I'm worse than that person or vice versa, right? I would want to steer people away from it. Just, I'm just going to say that. If you are doing it so that you can beat someone else, because it makes you feel good that you beat someone else, which sounds silly to even say that out loud, but it happens and it has happened. Don't do it. Dallas and I used to play around, like almost a joke with each other. And he would go redo a workout Monday night and be like, oh, I, I came to the gym one time on a Monday to try to beat him. But him and I would laugh about it. And I don't think there's a lot of laughing when it comes to people redoing a workout so they could beat someone else. I think it's a faulty approach that I think could actually ended up hurting your CrossFit experience. If your self-worth is bound up into it, it's a problem. Okay. So you and Dallas, it wasn't that it made you feel like you were better or worse no. for doing it. Playful trash. It talk. was just because you guys like ribbing each other about yeah, stuff. Right. I would never redo a workout unless I catastrophically failed on my first one for some reason. And my personal goal is to get to the quarterfinals. And if I felt like redoing it, would substantially increase my chances of getting into the quarterfinals for yep. my age group, I would consider redoing it, but I would have to think about it quite a bit because it is a goal, but it's not an end all be all goal. Right. Yeah. And I would have to think about it. Right. Like yep. you mentioned, there are dangers for redoing things. Yeah. And I want to protect my body and safety first. Yep. There would be a lot of considerations, but I have never really thought about trying to beat someone in a workout or achieve a higher ranking at the gym. I have looked at it. There's no doubt. No, yeah. At the end of the open, I but will I'll tell you what, if that's something that really you want, you need to work on stuff throughout the year. It's not just about the open. No, it's a litmus test to see where I am right. overall. Right. I also love it when I see newer athletes shooting up on the ranks too. Yeah. And listen, I realize it, it pisses me off when younger, newer athletes get really good. <laughs> I love it, but it also pisses me off because I see how much progress they're making. And at yep. this point, my progress is really slow if yep. I'm making any. Yep. But I wouldn't ever want to redo something just to make myself feel better about it. Right. And I don't think that's a really healthy way of looking at it. Yeah. Like, I think it makes a lot of sense for someone like Sam, if he's like, hey, I really blew it on Friday and I want to make the quarterfinals and, you know, that score is not going to be top 10% because that's how you make the next stage from the open is you finish top 10% in your age group or in the open division if you're not 35 yet. It makes sense to do that, right? It, it, that is a situation where I'm like, all right, you know what? Let's do this. If if you have two weeks where like you finished ninth percentile and then your third workout, you finished like 20th percentile. All right, Sam, you're going to have to do this again, actually. So <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Coach. <laughs> like something like that is where if you really are trying, if that is your goal, I know there's some people in our gym that really want to maximize the worldwide rank. That's what they're using as a litmus test. So yes, it does make sense to come back in on a Sunday. And what it does, it can force you to learn. Like I've learned so much by redoing workouts when it comes to how many reps per minute can I handle of something? How do I properly pace? That's when I really started to getting into how to pace workouts in a mixed modal setting where you don't have a machine that's telling you what your pace is, like a rower, like my wall ball pace, thruster pace, pull up pace, muscle up pace. How long does it take me to do 10 muscles when I'm tired? Blah, blah, blah. Like how many times do I need to break that up? I started learning all that by redoing workouts because I was like, all right, I got to do the same workout, same environment, same situation. What do I need to do every minute and 35 seconds to get better? In that regard, it makes sense. And you will see a benefit from learning about yourself. But the dangers of repeating, especially with max intense rates, is the repetitive movement patterns. If you're going to go out and do a workout that has 110 thrusters and then two days later, do it again you're not going to feel good a day or two later and, and you're opening up the door for injury. And I've seen people without a high confidence level that you can do substantially better. 
Right. I have seen people actually do slightly worse on yeah. their repeats. Yep. So you really have to know yourself and know what it is that I can substantially improve upon on my repeat. Good point. In order to do. Very good point. Yeah. I've been on that side before. <laughs> I remember we did uh, the thruster jump rope workout and I, I usually have Adam Ranson judge me. Just he's just very objective. There's no emotion. Just, hey, two, three, four. All right, next move, next move. So I always like having, and I drew out a pace. And one time I did a thruster jump rope workout. It was one of the last ones. It was the last open workout of 2017, maybe. And I was convinced I was a minute faster. And I get done, do the dramatic flop to the ground. I look at him like, yeah, a minute faster. And he just looks at me. I just whiteboard. And he goes, no, slower. <laughs> I was like, I just went through all that for nothing because my goal on that was literally just get better than my previous score. There was nothing, beat that person, beat that person. And it didn't work. And I'm like, wow, I went through all that for nothing. And it was, that's a funny story. Last thing I want everyone to be prepared for is dealing with a judge. We don't, we don't do a lot of workouts throughout the year where someone is standing next to you, counting your reps and letting you know if you're doing reps or not. And this is a very tough thing as a gym owner. We try to be as objective as possible. If you don't squat on a wall ball, you're not getting the rep. And we've had issues. Like people get frustrated. They yell at the person. And sometimes like a poor, innocent new member that's getting yelled at because they said no rep. Or honestly, a judge is afraid to no rep someone. And I'm, I'm very adamant. Every time we run competitions here, when I go to a competition during the open, if I ever see anyone go at a judge, you're out. In a, I won't even give you a warning. You get the warning before. Maybe this is your warning right now. You do not argue with a judge that no rep to you. Like you just got to be better. That's the thing. And this happens a lot with like squat depth, elbow lockouts. You're going to have someone tell you that you didn't do the movement correctly. And how you respond to that will say a lot about your character. Just know that going in. Because I've been no rep so many times. You don't stop. You just don't get credit for the rep. You just keep going. If you're going to stop and get frustrated and cry and yell at the judge or think even a think a bad thought about your judge, it's a really bad job by you. What are your thoughts? The other thing is that we're holding the judges to uphold the standards. I have seen many times judges, it's their friend. They want to be nice. They don't want to right. compromise somebody's score. Yep. And so they're not holding people to standards. And if we're coaches and we see you as a judge and you're not holding that person to a standard yeah. properly, we're going to be on you for it because yeah. that's not right. You're not helping that athlete. Right. And let me tell you, a lot of people don't even realize that they're not meeting standards. I will tell you, when I did wall balls for years, I thought I was squatting to depth. And it took people constantly telling me I wasn't before I videoed myself, looked at myself, and I said, wow, I feel like I'm doing it, but right. I'm not. Yep. When you sit there and you are not holding an athlete to standard and the temptation is to let it slide just because you want them to get a good score or you're afraid of them saying something, right. you are hurting them as an athlete. Yep. So please, if you are a judge, be dispassionate. Yep. Don't bring any emotion into it. If they're not meeting standards, no rep them. Yeah. And just so you guys, I think I've been in, in, I've been no rep so many times. Like it happens to everybody. It doesn't mean you're doing a bad job. It nope. doesn't mean you're out of shape. doesn't mean you suck. It's like anything, like a, a pitcher throws a ball, a, a professional basketball player misses a free throw. You're not going to be perfect on stuff. So just don't be afraid of that. And I actually think I always appreciate when I get no rep because it's like Sam said, I know the judge is making me a better athlete. It's the judge is actually helping you when you get no rep. And that's why like, I freak out when Danny Spiegel starts crying on Wadapalooza when her judge no reps her, like, get, get over yourself. And the other like, thing is that if that athlete, if you let that athlete go and they get an awesome score, you're also doing a disservice to everyone else in the gym. Correct. Yeah. So, you it's know. It's like a lie. It's a lie. It's a lie. You're not validating that person's score. Right. You're actually invalidating that person's score. You're going to be a judge. You're going to want to make sure you hold to the standards, not just for that athlete, but for the rest of the gym. We're counting on you. And if you're that athlete and you don't even realize that you're not holding to standard, well, this is a good way of getting that feedback. And like Dave said, you're not going to be angry about it. You're going to understand that there's something I'm doing that needs to be changed. Yeah, improved. Yeah. And improved. And listen, I know that there are some people out there that literally their mobility sucks. Right. And they're not going to be able to maintain standards. Yep. So be it. So you're going to get no rep. That's just the rest of the year. Your, your physical limitations are going to be what they are. Yep. We all have them too. 
you're going to go three times as slow this time and really see if you can actually hold to a certain standard. And and that's just the way it's going to be. Yep. Yeah. So just overall, just to wrap this up, like there, there's a lot that goes into this, this mental prep, like how you're going to work out, how do you respond to certain things? That's going to be like, I'm always say, try to condition your response before it happens as best you can. So try to go in with a weekly plan, not just a daily plan. What are you going to do when certain movements come up? What are you going to do when your judge no reps you? What are you going to do when you're not happy about your score? What are you going to do when someone next to you crushes your score? How do you respond to that? will say a lot about you and it'll say a lot more about you than what your actual performance is in a workout. We're so like performance, what's your score? What's your score? Let me write it on the whiteboard. Let's log it out. Log it on the game's website before Sunday night. Your mental response is going to dictate a lot about you just as a person in and out of the gym. I mean, I'm thinking about this podcast and I'm thinking about how we're, I don't want to say being harsh, but we're saying this. Yeah. I would say 95 or 4% of the athletes at at the gym are examples to me. Right. They are resilient, awesome, great attitude people that I look up to. And I look up to so many people here at the gym, but I also know that we all need some encouragement, some positivity in terms of how to look at things. And also sometimes a little bit of a mind shift to just make sure I'm not being down, like I got to get into the right mindset with certain things. And sometimes what we talk about is just to sort of help give that little. Yeah. Give a little boost, give give things that we wish we had in our first two, three years of CrossFit because a lot of these lessons, like we learned the hard way, we made mistakes and then, and we didn't have really, we didn't have as much guidance as if I feel like a lot of people in the gym now have more guidance than a lot of CrossFitters had, not just at Bison in general, than people had eight, nine years ago. Thank you, everybody, for taking the time out of your day to listen to the Herd Fit Podcast. Be on the lookout for next week's episode.